This work is about investigating the anatomy of the superior longitudinal fascicles in humans using multi-resolution ex vivo diffusion MRI. Have no financial interest to declare. The intrinsic low spatial resolution of commonly achievable diffusion MRI acquisitions means that in each voxel, different fiber configurations will be represented by similar diffusion profiles, and tractography won't be able to distinguish between them, leading to both false positive and false negative reconstructions. This is particularly true for less coherent white matter bundles that include more complex fibrous configurations. Here we focus on the SLF system, a major frontoparietal corticocortical association pathway with three subcomponents, SLF1, 2, and 3. The human morphology of the most dorsal component remains highly controversial and its tractography based reconstruction challenging, particularly while the literature agrees on its posterior termination in the superior parietal lobule, it remains unclear whether the SLF terminates in the supplementary motor air or it extends more anteriorly to connect regions in the superior frontal gyrus. Our goal is to understand whether we can incorporate higher spatial resolution information to inform the anatomy of such more challenging bundles and improve tractography results. From a post-mortem human brain left hemisphere, we extracted three blocks from three slabs along the length of the superior frontal gyrus. The fixed hemisphere was previously scanned at 750 microns isotropic resolutions. The blocks were then scanned in a small bore at 250 microns. Diffusion profiles were then obtained using constrained spherical deconvolution and the orientation information from both datasets was combined in a multi-resolution tractography process. Each block was further subdivided in two smaller blocks and direct information of fiber orientation at much higher resolution was obtained using polarization-sensitive optical coherence tomography. Here is how the multi-resolution tractography works. Tractography is sitting in the hemisphere white matter, and a backbone of the IPI local tractography algorithm is used to propagate tractography. When a high-resolution region is encountered, the local diffusion orientations from the high-resolution volume are used to propagate tractography. Results show that more streamlines are reconstructed when using multi-resolution tractography compared to regular tractography particularly more streamlines connecting the posterior third of the superior frontal gyrus and more frontal regions. And if we zoom in, we can clearly see how the higher resolution data allows to distinguish between different fiber populations compared to the low resolution data where they get blended together. These images show the streamlines termination maps for regular tractography versus multi-resolution approach. And if we look at the distribution of the streamlines, we can see that we do not only obtain more streamlines, but that they are differently distributed, with regular tractography recovering streamlines closer to the cingulum gyrus and multi-resolution tractography showing more streamlines in the paracingulate gyrus and superior frontal gyrus, resembling what we know from animal tracing studies. From each block in the superior frontal gyrus, we then obtain orientation information from smaller blocks using polarization-sensitive optical coherence tomography. We then use this information to compute PS-OCT-based tractography, and when we focus on the anterior posterior orientations where the SLF is supposed to be, we see coherent fibers reaching more anterior portion of the superior frontal gyrus, aligned with the diffusion-based multi-resolution tractography results. To conclude, the work presented here is a first step in the direction of combining data collected at multiple scales to advance knowledge of white matter anatomy. These results suggest the SLF fibers continue after motor regions in the ventral superior frontal gyrus and paracingulate gyrus. We have previously shown we can improve tractography results on routine quality data by training on high quality data. So this information can then be used to improve the accuracy of automatic tractography on routine quality in vivo scans. The next steps will involve integrating the fiber orientation information from PSOCT into the tractography process.